am excited to have with me L Ingalls. And L is hi L. So great to see you. Um, I'm going to read your yeah. bio real quick. So L Ingalls is an international speaker, coach, author, and founder of Pressure Free Living, which I can't wait to hear about. She helps people improve their health and performance with her on-the-go stress management method. A former member of the Forbes Coaches Council, she's created a series of online courses and has coached thousands of people from age 10 to 80 around the globe, and you play violin. You're actually a musician, which is where this all began. So welcome, Elle. I'm so excited to have you. And Thanks. Tell us a little bit about first who you are and how you got started in this. And then I want to hear your secret on Stress Free. Uh, how I got started is probably the best story. So um, I, I am a violinist. I also am a conductor and I was an executive for years. So I managed symphonies and um, my husband and I founded a music school, which was really cool. We did a lot of really great things for our community and we raised three boys. Um, and when we got to like the oldest about to get into high school, we had always worked for nonprofit, arts nonprofit. So that meant like no retirement. There's no health benefit. Like we were, we were paying for all that kind of stuff ourselves. Um, and we're on a tiny, tiny little budget. Here, here's how one of my sons put it. We're like the classiest poor people I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the case for a lot of classical musicians, by the way. Oh, really? <laughs> so <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> We're so, you know, anyway, we could go on all day about that, but here's what, here's what went down. I wanted to create my own for-profit business, like do something. I didn't know if it was going to be a store or what. And for years I've taught financial management to nonprofits. So I thought I'm going to just bump that all up with some cool things I do. So it's putting together like modules of kind of a course basically. And one of the things my uh, 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 book I was reading said is put a mentor in your life. So I, um, had lunch with a few people. I mean, I knew a lot of executives because I ran the symphony for years, like cool people, but it was like, they didn't know why I was meeting with them. <laughs> I, I wasn't really feeling the vibe. And then, so I kind of gave up and then I said social media. And I'd always refused to do any social media whatsoever. It was 2010. I, I wanted nothing to do with it. And my, my boys are like, oh, you'll love it, mom. You'll connect with your friends, blah, blah, blah. And, and sure enough, I did love it. <laughs> so I got on, connected with my friends. And then I connect to this person who's like an amazing economic developer and I ask him if he'll be my mentor. So um, we have our first meeting, I show him what I'm doing and he goes, hey, this is all great, but um, I read your bio online, this is not what you should be doing. You're very multi-talented, this is not it. And I'm like, great, three months of hard work and he's telling me to shelve it. <laughs> and he's like, no, don't, don't. Put it aside i'm just saying stay open that there might be something else that you can create or develop mm -hmm. so just um two nights later we're sitting around the dining room table and um my two older boys were playing baseball for the same high school team and the oldest goes mother you should coach our team in your mental toughness tips we could be state champions and i just started laughing i'm like you want me in the dugout <laughs> Like and he goes, seriously, I want you in the dugout. <laughs> so um, I looked at my middle son and he's like, we want you, mom. We want you to do this. So I put together, I don't consider myself a writer. Now I'm an author. I have a book on Amazon. It's like unbelievable. So I sat down and I just, it was literally streaming out of me, mm. like just pouring out of me. And I created a little pamphlet. So um, I've actually been doing this stuff since I was about 17. Mm even maybe 16, because I, I started teaching violin to beginners when I was only 16. And then I was coaching athletes at 17. So I've had this in me for a long time. It's not like it just magically appeared, but to actually codify and write and create like in curriculum. Mm -hmm. So I just start writing. I have kind of this, my husband's a, a professional writer. He tightens the writing and puts some graphics in. Like it's kind of cool little booklet. And I take it to the uh, the coaches, take it to the guy with the arms folded and the big chew, right? First, the assistant coach, who's actually our athletic director. And he's like, 
wow, this has merit. You should work with the boys. Take it to the head coach. I'm fully supportive. So I got his okay. Took it to the head coach. Head coach hired me to be his private coach on the spot. Nice. And then two days later, I was talking to the department chair at my college where I taught violin and viola for years. And she, she goes, oh, my gosh. She literally, she grabbed her checkbook. I'll never forget it. She grabbed her checkbook, opened up and says, how much does this cost? I need to start tomorrow. Wow. So I had two, two paying clients and a whole baseball team to start <laughs> working with. And then it was just it's like word of mouth. People started finding out what I was doing. And literally in the whole beginning of, it was just people found out about me or I'd go speak somewhere and people were like, oh my gosh, I need this. Or I, my mm -hmm. adrenals are fatigued or my daughter has high anxiety, you know, whatever it was. And so yeah, I literally have worked with age 10. She was um, a stunner, headed to the 2020 Olympics was her goal. Um, and then uh, an 80 year old who was the mother of an Olympian gold medalist. Wow. It's kind of funny how the bookends. Yeah, we're both. I've worked with, yeah, I've worked with maybe three or four 10 year olds. They tend to be the um, high academicians, like they're very driven, want to go to an Ivy League school, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, or um, athletes or musicians, like they've got a little niche that they're, and they want to perform better without the anxiety. Um, and yeah. then I've worked with people with high anxiety problems health wise, a lot of times people though are coming to me for performance they want to get a promotion at work or they're um business owners and they need more money coming in there's like or they're, they're we're, we're in 2020 let's face it pretty much everything is anxiety right <laughs> causing we're already a high highly stressed society before yeah. then like i mean my tw i have 2018 stats that show that 18 percent and these are of people going to a professional and reporting problems with anxiety um that's a high percentage of our population that's not functioning well and but for children age 13 to 18 it's um over 25 percent over yeah. a quarter of them and increasing and right now there's a, yeah there's a there was a study in 2018 too that a third of um harvard students were on anti-anxiety or mm. antidepressants yeah those are pills that are never supposed to be used long term and people are using them every day for long periods of time and and there's never been a long-term study done on this, the effects of your biology on your reproductive capabilities on any of that yeah so or there's a lot to your brain there's a lot going on now you yeah. your book that you just released is pressure free parenting so you really right. focused in on parenting which is why we've got you here today so First of all, how did you get focused right on parenting? And then what can you give us? What tip can you give us um, for pressure-free parenting? Because I know all of us feel like we're in a pressure cooker right now. Yes. So um, I, I'm not a parenting coach like you. You are a professional parenting coach. And um, But in well, two years ago, I was working with a coach down in Florida. We're like putting big things up on paper. And you're trusting book titles, you're just testing things, you know, and, and so for some reason, I just wrote pressure free parenting, pressure free is my method. Mm -hmm. I popped it up on the board and my coach who had two young toddlers comes running over their high heels and she goes, that's it, that's it. <laughs> please, please. She goes, I want, I want that. Please give me that. <laughs> and actually she wanted it so much. She asked me after lunch, if I would take like a 20 minute slot and coach the whole group. Wow. To be on her stage. And and she rarely invites people up on her stage that don't pay to get there, right? So it was really kind of cool. So that was kind of a little bit of a spark. Yeah, but when I would say so. Hit, when, when everything has hit us, I was like, I need to help parents. Parents are experiencing what no, hopefully none of us ever mm -hmm. again will have to. And so I dug in to, to that because I know if I can help a parent, they can teach what I have created to their kids very easily, very gently. It's almost seamlessly. For example, my 10 year old son, he's, he was one of my first 10 year olds to work with, you know, but I didn't actually coach him. I just started to show him mm -hmm. because he had a lot of anger issues. He thought he was terrible at math. He ended up being one of the top students in elite math and science center a national merit finalist and he has over four point at Columbia. And I don't say that to brag in any way. It's like, that's, that's, he was going from, he had a, 
he had he was going to go two ways. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. the anger was so so disruptive, and I know parents are struggling with a that. lot. Do yes, right now. They're, they're angry, they're anxious, they yep. have no idea what their futures hold, and so to watch my son, who's like. To, since age 10, he's 20 now, 10 years of solidly using this. And now he changed his major to be a psychology major to create a lab with me. Like, wow, that's so cool. But I created. So it is really cool. So, so um, let me give you something really great. Your parents, you can use, you can use this right now. I'll just give you this, the lowdown of the method mm -hmm. and then a simple tool. Perfect. So three simple steps. Targets, triggers, tools. What is a target that you have? Maybe it's simply having a better morning with your family. You're not, you don't want to be in that rush, 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 and that you've got to get on your Zoom call now. You're like all the crap that happens in the early morning. That so your target is you want a smoother morning mm -hmm. as a parent. Next, you need to identify some of the triggers. The triggers can happen just from when your alarm goes off. The sound of the alarm may actually release your fight or flight stress hormones. So check all the buzzes and bells mm. and whistles that go on in the morning. Even the timer on your cough, something, you know, really look at all those little sensory things. Mm. You may have a high sensitive child who maybe your alarm is causing them to release the stress hormones. Wow, stress yeah. is not the problem. The release of the stress hormones is the problem. Mm -hmm. The moment they go out, you can't think and remember. So you might have worked really great on those math facts, but your child goes in and fails the test or doesn't do as well as they know they could. That's because the hippocampus cannot function well once you've triggered those hormones. I call it hijacking. The brain gets hijacked. Yeah, you're in your, and you know, it's not bad if you're really under attack. That's the only reason we need fight or flight. You're going into your survival brain to protect yourself. And in some social situations, you may feel like it's a, it's scary, so you're 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 just trying to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a very natural thing, but it's not helpful for most of the things we're trying to do. So when that happens, here's something a lot of people don't know: for a male, so if you have a son, it's going to take up to nine hours after the adrenaline flood, second flood that actually goes out to fix your brain cells, glucose and cortisol, fix your brain cells. But cortisol can make you feel anxious for no reason. It's also your wake-up drug. So that's why you wake up at 2 or 3 a.m. But you need glucocorticoids. You don't want to just suppress cortisol like people are doing with weed mm. and CBD oil. You don't want to reduce the cortisol if you release the adrenaline. You need it. Your body is excellently designed. It's really amazingly designed. So we have to stop the flood of the adrenaline. What triggers that adrenaline flood? It could be this sounds it could be the tone of your voice when you talk to your child it could be their tone of voice to you it could you know there's just a mm -hmm. myriad like one of my baseball player guys he said how long his sister takes a shower triggers him every morning because they share a bathroom he can't get in there yeah so you need to identify a few triggers and now i'm going to give you a couple tools awesome as a parent as a parent and here's a secret from the time you first feel or notice the trigger, you have about 10 seconds before your amygdala tells your heart rate to rise, tells your adrenal glands to release. What can you do in that 10 seconds to not trigger the hormones? There's over 40 things I teach in my courses, but there's so many little things you'll figure out. The instant, the most instant thing you can do is relax your abdominal muscles. When you relax your abdominal muscles, you send a signal to your brain you're okay because our abs protect some of our most precious organs. And we tighten those in order to protect ourselves. And when we tighten the abs, the throat tightens. Mm. Now we're in that grady voice that our kids hate. <laughs> so if you relax your abs, your throat will also relax. You can have a better voice, which is gonna super help. Mm -hmm. And it also is signaling your, your brain that you're not under attack. Because if you're attacked, you're going to tighten, you're going to coil, and you're going to get ready to fight or run away. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole bunch of other Fs you do too. So when we get <laughs> together, we're going to do like a Tuesday night thing coming up. Yes. At some point in the future here. Yep. I'm whole hour of these goodies. Yes. So excited yeah. about that. Yeah.
I'm already taking lots yeah, of notes. So we'll dig in. Yeah, we'll dig in. But if you simply relax your abs, that's going to instantly change something. Here's mm-hmm. another thing people don't understand. Like you, in fact, there's articles out today that are countering this, and I really want to get clear about the science of this. In fact, what a lot of people say to me is, oh my gosh, you're teaching me that biology is causing my anxiety. I'm like, yes. Exactly. Biology is causing at least half of your anxiety. What Mm -hmm. if you reduced your anxiety by half? How would that feel for you? It's incredible. It's just incredible. So we'll back up. When you, um, most people don't know this, but the corners of your mouth going up cause a little bit of dopamine to release. Dopamine. Dopamine gets a bad rap because it's linked to addiction. However, dopamine is a neurotransmitter required for your whole brain to to work. Mm -hmm. When you go into fight or flight, like you say, it's hijacked. It's because dopamine shuts off. So now this cortex, you're thinking, making decisions, your willpower, there's two spots in your brain for willpower, and you're thinking, and remember, it's all compromised. You're not doing so well there. That's when you'll say things and do things you later regret. You'll yell at your child to get in the car. What is that? Yeah. I'm going to tell you what it is right now. It's really poor parenting. (laughs) Well, I I say once you start yelling, you stop parenting. Yeah, you know, and, but I've been there. Oh my gosh. You know, Mm -hmm. who hasn't like had this, like, we've got to get in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So figuring this out all out completely changed our family. When the smile happens, when even if you smile a little bit, but you have to catch it in the 10 seconds. If you try to smile too late, it will feel like fake smiling. It will mm-hmm. feel like it's not working. That's because you've already released the hormones. So if you can catch it in that 10 seconds and just smile a little bit, dopamine's gonna release. Now you can choose your response to the situation. And it's gonna be much different. 1977, I believe, University of California did a study. I can't find it anywhere. I believe it's been blocked on smile therapy. Mm -hmm. Most people have never heard of smile therapy because it's free. (laughs) It doesn't cost you anything to smile. And it works so well. (laughs) It works so well. It changes the whole, your whole face. You know, when we get stressed, we go tight. If you have furrows in your brow, that's a sign. Yeah. That you're triggering stress hormones too much, you know? But when your face goes broad you're, and you're soft in the belly and soft in the throat, then someone can actually hear you and listen to you. And this, you can hear and listen to them. This it's is so, so cool. great, Elle. This is so great. And we're going to go really, really deep. We're running out of time now. We're going to go really yeah, deep into this. Time. Before we go, yes. let people know how they can find you and your book. Okay, so you can my name or just remember pressure-free.com and I'll have the link too. I'll Ingalls. add the link here. Yeah. You can see my name right on the screen here. L Ingalls, E L L E. So, um, and my book is on Amazon. It's called pressure free parenting. I'm doing a big launch on the 25th. If you can hold out till then, if not, just buy it. I want you to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. Like it's, it's really, simple Mm -hmm. and easy it's only 150 pages like it's not big big. (laughs) and these are some of the endorsers on the nice who um yeah i mean i've got a parenting coach on here i've got um a social worker who was in a psychiatric children's hospital in detroit for 10 years and you've got pat quinn um, a ceo (laughs) and pat quinn who is his teaches us how to talk or speak, teaches us, as I say it completely inaccurately, he teaches us how to talk. That was not a good promotion for Pat Quinn right there. Oh, oh my gosh. That's right. That's how we connect. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So cool. So thank you so much. And I'm going to put all the information down below and we are going, I'll, I'll blast when we are doing our Tuesday night. And going in deep because I know a lot of people here are stressing out and just being able to have tricks to stop that anxiety because it's one thing to try to curb it back but if we can stop it from happening in the to begin with that would be amazing that'd be amazing it's really cool all right thank you so much I can't wait to work with you it's gonna be fun it is gonna be fun thanks everyone